Yo, what's up? This K Shells with True Wave, and you watching Team Rich TV. Keep that 40 in my lap when you see me roll up. They ain't wanna let me in, now I'm taking over. K Shells, it's just so you know. Young man from Port Arthur, Texas, a musician, a audio engineer, and a lover of people, and a child of God. I don't know what you be on. I don't know what you be on, I don't know, but I be on my PHC, or I be on my PHC, 409, that you ever seen, a message came, I read the screen, it said I appreciate everything, hit me if you ever need anything, that's the treatment you get, when you be on your shit, everything square business won't ever be different, I'ma keep it legit. Engineering is, is a craft that I'm taking on real strong. But my artistry hasn't faded, you know what I'm saying? I just haven't been releasing or acting as a working artist. I just love the craft of making music too, so I'm never gonna stop doing that. But the income and everything right now is coming from engineering, but we also trying to get into all type of creative media, really. True Wave consists of K Shells, myself, and Carlay, my business partner. Uh, she's also an artist, entrepreneur, creative director, a uh, hell of an artist, I gotta say it twice. And um, yeah, we, we moving, man. We've been, we've been moving strong for like a, a few years now. And now the brand is really starting to show the fruits of our labor, you know. What is it like being an engineer from Port Arthur? Um, I, would, I would say that it's great because first and foremost, I'm surrounded by a lot of great talent and a lot of great people and a lot of great music and, a, and good history in Port Arthur. You know, from Janis Joplin, UGK, all of that. Just a, a lot of good music history. On the flip side of that, it's just not a good place to have a musical outlet right now. So it's like, a, you gotta be internet heavy, I feel like, if you in Port Arthur, for artists and engineers, like to, to get your brand out, you gotta be moving around and you gotta be internet heavy. Yeah, y'all know what the fuck is up. J Stone, all money in, no money out. I'm here in Trio Wave recording studio, getting it in. Yeah. Some artists that I work with in the industry uh, Bun B, J Stone. I was on a project with Beanie Siegel a long time ago, back in the day, an underground project. 80% of the people in the 409 have at some point worked with me in the studio. And that's that's about as realistic as I could be. It's Mike Dean, I'm down in Port Arthur, Texas, fucking with K-Shells. See, we out here in the, in the spot. Yeah. A little secret studio, <laughs> not secret anymore. <laughs> yeah, I haven't really worked with a whole lot of established artists in all honesty, but I work with a lot of great artists. And you mentioned Mike Dean, man, that Mike Dean situation was crazy because um, an artist that worked with him really closely that came to the studio and they had a piece of equipment of his and they had left it there. And so I had a, you know, I, I looked at the equipment, it was an MPC uh, 4000 if I'm being, I think it's the 4000. But yeah, the, uh, I hit him on Twitter in a long stretch and I was like, yo, I think I got your MPC 4000 and he DM'd me right back and he wanted it. So he drove down to PA and uh, picked it up, but he also checked out some music, vibe, you know. Uh, we, we did eventually collaborate later in the future with a, uh, on a Chad Butler Jr. project that me and Chad Butler Jr. had put together a song and he had reached out and wanted to remix it and basically produced it. He took the, uh, we had it like on a YouTube beat and he basically produced the beat around what we had and, and so that's how that came about. But I haven't, I haven't been able to like be in the studio working with him, you know, but he's a cool guy for sure. I can't help it that his greatness out of my plan. Oh, yeah. I can't help it if you hate that's out of my hands. Oh, yeah. yeah. Need that paper, I can't wait, ain't missing my chance. Oh, yeah. Independent bitch, I'm straight, don't need an advance. Oh, yeah. yeah. No attention when you drop that's out of my hands. Oh, yeah. I like your mixtape, but it flopped that's out of my hands. Oh, yeah. Niggas want features, try to make fans out of my fans. Yeah. You in the bleachers, I'm in the game, that's out of my hands. Oh, yeah. Nigga, heart can't ease up. I had 
to run my cheese up Niggas claim they real when shit go down, they quick to freeze up You can't hold it down, my nigga, you ain't P.O.P. Yeah. How you trillin', you ain't never been a P.A.T. Yeah. When I step out, I'm clean, yeah She wanna join the team, yeah I don't pull up just to My journey as an engineer, it started off just like everybody on like, you know, the home There was, there was a computer at the house, I used to record on one of them headsets with the microphone I did that for a long time, pretty much for free. That's when I was paying my dues, getting my skills up. And then eventually uh, I started recording in the closet like everybody else, you know. But I, I kind of mastered the art of recording in the closet early. So nobody was complaining about recording at the house in the closet. They was just complaining about like the space it being that we had a small room we was recording and they couldn't bring all the homies. I was strict about having a whole bunch of people at the house and stuff. So that eventually pushed us to find other spaces you know and um just moving from spot to spot i rented a lot of properties out in, in port arthur and needling and different areas and everyone we was in we was putting studios in and then uh, eventually it was like yo it's time to, to get some type of commercial space you know and take this thing more seriously and i had I, I i'm trying to remember exactly how i linked up with peasy but um I just know it, it had got, I had got word that the studio up there had nothing going on. Like it was basically just a vacant spot with all the equipment already in there. And so I found a way to reach out to him and be like, yo, what's up with that? You know, you know, we, we worked something out to where I, I was in that studio for probably a good year and a half. And uh, I think we kind of outgrew that studio space within a year and a half too to the point to where like we needed our own space because the clientele wasn't properly, it wasn't good clientele mixed with the other businesses that was in the building, you know. My people coming there loud, cussing all loud while people doing taxes and doing insurance claims downstairs. And it was just a lot of, a lot of clashing going on, late nights and stuff, they didn't really like that. So eventually I just felt like we needed to get into a bigger market anyway. So then we, we started expanding out into Houston Found a space out here, and we've been out here ever since. What it do, man? GPF 45, you already know. I stay recording at Trill Wave Studios, you dig? You know what I'm saying? The Trillist place to record, you feel me? So, hit up my people, get with them, you know what I'm saying? And get the best sound, for sure. Man, you already know who it is, your boy Young Cooter. Anytime you in the age time, you dig? You gotta lock in with the Trill Wave Studios. <laughs> What's up, it's your boy Trill, that Pope is that get us down, Mr. Bowtie shining shoes, hey. Hey man, we at the Trill Way studio, it's going down. Y'all need to come book here, man. No need to look, but go ahead and book, you know what I'm talking about? And tell them Trill Post sent you, you feel me? Social media has become like the new radio, basically. How radio used to be back in the day, and, and news, I guess, too. But radio more more or less, because radio had the, the culture following it. Like if something was on the radio, then everybody assumed that that was just it. You know, now it's kind of like that with social media. If something's buzzing hot on social media, everybody just assume like that's the hot thing. That's that's what, like as far as like those those people who out there who kind of follow trends and try to see what other people are doing and kind of try to gauge what they're doing off of what others are doing, I feel like it confuses them because there's so many people that go viral and they're trying to figure out well, how he did this, how he did that, you know, but I think it just goes back to everybody just kind of being themselves. You don't, you gotta, you gotta just be yourself and be and show the people the process, all that, all the antics and stuff. If it's natural, it's authentic, then it is what it is. But I feel like pushing narratives and faking antics for, for streams, clout, money is business. You know, that's that's what people do, and that's just part of this game. You know, and that's become a big part of this game, unfortunately. But. Right now, we got, instead of complaining about it, we got to either play by the rules or change the rules, you know? Right now, uh, we we really focusing on the, the rollout plan for some of this music we got for Carlay. And then at the same time, we're working on like a true wave compilation album to include some of these artists that you name. And it's going to be produced by me and I got an artist in New York, Veli, shout out Veli in, in New York, man. He got quite a few tracks on the project right now and um, I say we about five six tracks in already so uh, probably look out look out for that in the summertime or something like that and then uh, as far as the brand man our projects we got a lot of new merch coming soon 
and uh, we trying to find a new location because we trying to step into the video production side of things. So we want a photography studio, complex recording studio, all of that all in one, you know, so we can kind of get right now we moving around spot to spot. We want to try to put it all in, in one spot and, and have it nice for everybody. And it's going to be like a home base for us to do a lot of work and do a lot of collaborations. Everybody that's working with True Away, man, I want to help them make sure that they're moving at a professional pace. So everything they're doing is as professional as possible from an artist standpoint, entertainer standpoint. And so that's that's what we got coming up. We're going to probably try to host a few seminars, try to spread as much love and knowledge as we can, and try to just elevate as an area, you know, and spread the word, spread the name. The audio engineering is the most time consuming because, you know, people want time in the studio. So, like, I'm constantly in the studio, constantly trying to better my craft and better myself. And it, it, the other crafts do suffer a little bit from that. But we in grind mode, man. We still knock out songs. There's nothing. I, I'm a seasoned veteran at writing. I've been writing for a long time. I can knock out good quality music pretty fast. I'm not going to sit here and cap like I just knock a song out in two minutes and then but we not we don't waste time you know what i'm saying when it's time to write or when it's time to work on that we we work pretty effectively so uh but yeah we still doing production making beats we still using fl studio you know still doing the same things we used to do mastering that still using pro tools to record people mix people do uh sound design for different projects video projects and you know Stepping into the Adobe realm to get on a lot of uh, different photography blasts, you know, Lightroom, Photoshop. We're using all, all, the, all, the, all the software, man. We're just trying to expand and be a one-stop shop for people to come through and try to, you know, get quality work done on all levels. Yo, what's up? This is K-Shells with True Wave, and you've been watching Team Rich TV.